I'm so, so honored to invite Dr. Yasmin Ali Haq, who is the UNICEF representative to India, to speak next. Dr. Yasmin started her career with UNICEF as a health officer in Bangladesh in 1996, and she has held leadership roles at the UNICEF headquarters in New York and its country offices in South Sudan, Ghana, and Sri Lanka. Her leadership and professional experience spans over a wide range of fields, including policy analysis, strategic planning for maternal health and mortality reduction, child rights, and large scale responses for children in humanitarian crisis. We are so, so honored to have you with us today, Dr. Yasmin. Thank you for your time and for joining us. And we really look forward to hearing your message for the youth today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shreya. And um, let me first start by uh, thanking uh, Sadhvi Swaraswati ji for her kind words and, and really um, after listening to Lisi Priya, I think we're all going to, uh, her words are going to be echoing in our, in our minds and in our hearts and, and hopefully in our deeds also. Because, um, you know, when we think about this time, um, International Youth Day, it's, uh, there's a lot of, um, what shall I say, fear. There's a lot of apprehension around the COVID uh, uh, situation that we're facing, the pandemic uh, that we're facing. Uh, yet, uh, it's amazing how much hope there is in it because we have um, children like Lisi Priya, young people who are raising their voices, who are marching for their rights, who are raising who are building movements for climate action and really reclaiming the space for, for influencing policy action. So congratulations to Lucy Priya and all our young uh, leaders who have joined us today. And I really look forward to hearing from, from all of you. Um, of course, as uh, Saraswati ji said, um, the Global Interfaith Wash Alliance um, has uh, being a trusted partner of the UN, of, of UNICEF, of UNFPA, uh, and really when it's about action, there's always a call for action. And I think the way that um, GY is able to bring together people, and today especially bring together young people uh, and calling them for action and supporting them in action is really is really something that uh, we find very very valuable. So when I'm talking today, I'm not just talking as a UN official, uh, but um, if I look back and, and uh, Lucy Priya set me thinking, um, what inspired and motivated my path when I was younger? And really it's about, um, it was because I was able to find an environment in which I could uh, voice my activism where I could uh, bring my peers together and our, my parents and my teachers supported me and my friends in, in really acting on what we believe was, was right for, for our communities. I did uh, study medicine and um, even in that training, I, I really learned the value of solidarity, of kindness and how volunteers can work in communities and, and change outcomes. And as I became um, a medical professional, practice myself, you know, you're always in the forefront of an emergency. And through my career also in, in UNICEF, a lot of my work has been in, in the tsunami crisis, in conflict in South Sudan. Um, and everywhere that I have worked, I have been um, inspired by the stubbornness and the hope of young people. Um, wherever you go, they will always be looking ahead. Uh, they'll be taking stock of what the situation is, but they will be looking for solutions. And youth movements, youth helpers, youth aspirations for the future are really holding up the sky in every crisis whether it's COVID or whether it's the floods that are affecting us even today in, in places like Assam and Bihar, our, our people are facing COVID and flooding uh, at the same time. And I know there are young people out there 
really uh, motivating communities and helping them get through these crises that they're facing. In India today, there are 600 million young people. There are more Indians under the age of 25 than the total population of the European Union. And UNICEF, along with UN agencies in India, we're really working hard to leverage this unique generational movement through an initiative that we call UWA, which I hope many of you will have heard of. If not, it's something really to look at because our objective through UWA is to you know, really get, uh, harness that great energy that is there among young people um, so that we can be looking at the core issues that they face, uh, which is of empowerment, which Lisi Priya explained so well. Uh, it's about education and it's about employment. So it's really important for us in the UN that we work together with all stakeholders to provide platforms that young people can take advantage of. But it's not just us. We have to be doing this uh, with young people, uh, not just for them. And for that, it's important that we hear your voices, that you tell us what solutions uh, will work best for you. And um, therefore, um, with your help, even though these numbers are hugely ambitious, we can make it. Um, India is becoming a global leader in a, in a multipolar world, a standout innovation economy that will show the world how to build back better. And as we learn of the Atmanirbhar Bharat that really believes in Vasudeva Kutumbakam, uh, that the world is one family, the engine of this new India is the youth, is the young people, um, no matter what age we are. <laughs> And for India's young climate activists, it's really important that they, they take strength from the fact that they are globally recognized for their work to empower communities and ecosystems. Uh, India's tech startups, which are over 1,300 every year, are building social responsibility into business. India's young inventors, as we saw last year during the Deputy Secretary General's visit to India, are creating sustainable solutions for waste disposal and emissions reduction for the world. We see India's young people in the role of panchayat representatives, social entrepreneurs, young politicians. We see them as a first line of defense when the floods and the cyclones hit, helping people reach safety and building apps to, to assess the damage and distribute supplies as I saw for myself in the, in the terrible calamity that Kerala faced last year. And we also saw them reaching out to their neighbors with masks and life-saving aid, fighting misinformation through social media networks and serving as frontline workers when the pandemic hit. As we embark on this process of rebuilding from the crisis this year, which is the 75th year of the United Nations, the leadership of young, skilled, educated, and engaged people will be critical. If there's any advice I were to offer, and, and it's not really advice, it's sharing my thoughts, um, is that keep up the momentum of your efforts. The world is at a tipping point. COVID-19 has revealed to us the urgency of climate action in preventing future pandemics. It has revealed how much worse the impact of public health emergencies is when a quarter of our world lives in multidimensional poverty. But this wake up call has given us a chance to completely reimagine the future. And this is where we really rely on young people to come forward. I just want to conclude with the world, words from the UN Secretary General in his message for the Youth Day, and I quote, Realizing the promise of this generation means investing far more in young people's inclusion, participation, organizations, and initiatives. I call on leaders and adults everywhere to do everything possible to enable the world's youth to enjoy lives of safety, dignity, and opportunity, and to contribute to the fullest of their great potential. For those of us who are in the UN, government, civil society, our task is to build that nurturing ecosystem 
that offers young people, especially young women, the future ready skills they need and the leadership positions that they deserve. I look forward to working with everyone here today and really, really thank Jiva for organizing uh, this event. We will definitely uh, reach our, our uh, targets and our mission with young people in the lead. Thank you very much.